Good morning. And it truly is wonderful to be back here again. It seems to have been forever since I was last here. But we're slowly getting there. By the time I get to 70, we might just be out of it. <laughs> Let us prepare to worship God with our call to worship. I'm going to read Psalm 34. Honour the Lord, all his people. Those who obey him have all they need. Even lions go hungry for lack of food. But those who obey the Lord lack for nothing good. Come, my young friends, and listen to me, and I will teach you to honour the Lord. Would you like to enjoy life? Do you want long life and happiness? Then keep from speaking evil and from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Strive for peace with all your heart. Amen. We'll now have our first, vis our first hymn, Be Thou My Vision. was actually translated into English from a lady in St Andrew's grandmother. So there you go, live and learn. Piece of useless information to put at the back of your head. Let us pray with our prayer of approach. We thank you Lord God that you have brought us safely here today. We pause and think of the gaps in our congregation this morning those who for many reasons may not be with us they are still our family lord as we come to you we bring them with us bind us together in your love and in the sharing of your gifts amen and can we have our readings now please our first reading is taken from 1 kings chapter 2 verses 10 and 12, and then moving on to chapter 3, from verse 3. 
and it's on page 335 in the Pew Bibles. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his rule was firmly established. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made me your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you've asked for this and not for a long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you've not asked for, both wealth and honour, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Amen. The second reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, starting to read at verse 15, and can be found on page 1176 in the Pew Bible. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. We'll now continue in prayer. Lord God, your world is full of beautiful gifts that you have provided, but sometimes we just do not see. Sometimes we take your gifts for granted, see them as our own property. We boast about them when we should be using them for the benefit of others. Sometimes we know you are calling us to use the talents that you have given us, but we hold back and someone suffers. 
Sometimes you use our talents when we should be giving someone else the chance to use theirs. We are sorry, Lord God. Help us not to be too proud to step back. For all that we have in Jesus, for all that we have in each other, for all the opportunities we have to share, we thank you, God. For the joy of seeing people grow in their gifts, for the joy we feel when we are serving others, for the camaraderie that working together for you brings, we thank you, God. And let us now continue using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we'll now have our next hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. wish for anything what would you wish for it's a game I used to play when I was a child and I'm sure we've all done it and we'd always wish for something that had something to do with wealth or fame or something we didn't really want or need our Old Testament reading for today describes the biblical counterpart to that childhood game Solomon has just ascended to the throne of his father David the beloved king of Israel. Solomon is now king, and he goes to Gibeon to offer sacrifices to the Lord. The Lord appears to Solomon in a dream, and he says to him, ask what I should give you. It is a remarkable offer, because God is asking the young king what he would like. Ask what you will, says God. 
One can imagine what he could request. Long life, riches, power, victory in battle. But Solomon doesn't ask for any of that. Instead, he praises God for God's faithfulness to his father, David. And he describes his own situation. He is a young man. He has to govern a very numerous people. Not just any people, but the nation of God's own choosing. Therefore, he asks God for a listening heart. Or, as some translations say, an understanding mind. In order to judge God's people and to discern between God, good and evil. A listening heart, an understanding mind, the ability to discern what is right and good. These are qualities essential to good governance. Qualities we should pray to find in our leaders, our own leaders. It speaks well of the young king that he recognises the enormous responsibility he has and seeks not material gifts for himself, but gifts of character that would benefit his people. Solomon's request does indeed please Lord the God, and the request is granted. In addition, God grants Solomon that which he didn't ask for, riches, honour, fame, and if he stays faithful to God, a long life. Blessings abound for this new king, but it is important to note that these material blessings are secondary. This text does not support a kind of prosperity. Solomon speaks to himself as God's servant and seeks not his own personal gain, but for the good of his people. Their best interests are what he wants. Wisdom in the biblical tradition has to do in, in a large part with what Solomon requests. The ability to discern good and evil. The ability to listen well and to judge rightly. In this story, Solomon's great wisdom is to understand as a special gift from God. Solomon is like our own leaders, a mixture of good and bad. Solomon is, in other words, like us, all of us saints and sinners at the same time. Perhaps his story then can inform us of our own stories. What would you wish for if you could wish for anything? Solomon, in his shortcomings later in life, answers well. He wishes not for personal gain or material possessions, but for a listening heart a discerning mind and the wisdom to govern his people well. For these attributes, Solomon becomes in later biblical tradition the essence of wisdom and a well-loved king. Our New Testament reading tells us how Apostle Paul is dealing with the preparation of the Christian for living in a sick society. We hear how the problems that the first century Christians faced are more or less the same problems that we are facing today. In a world in which they lived was essentially no different to the world we now live in. Paul is describing how to walk and how to live, no longer as Gentiles, but as Christians. He's asking us to live how we've been taught by Jesus that to put to oh, that the old nature must go and we must put on the new. Now, as we've already heard, Paul has gone into some detail. He has shown us something of the practical application of this process in various normal and expected situations of life. He has come to grips with some of the great issues of his day and ours, especially in the matter of sexual morality. Now he summarises this for all of us to an attempt to put the emphasis upon the supreme things. He begins with one statement that says it all. Look carefully at how you walk. That is the supreme thing 
not where, not where you walk, but how you walk. Where you walk is relatively easy, a relatively easy problem, but how you are applying this principle in every moment of your life, that's what's really important. First, we walk understandingly. Well, understanding what? Understanding the character of life. Paul comes to grips here with the problem this is personal and present with all of us. He is dealing with the matter of the times in which they, we live and he says, understand this, be wise, don't be foolish, but act as a wise man. How? How do we do that? By making the most of our time. We are not to be unwise, but wise. Making the most of the opportunities around us, which can sometimes seem to be against us. We should always try to be positive and waste no opportunity to do good wherever possible. Paul goes on to say, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. That is, be aware of what God wants us to do in every situation. Now, almost always when one uses that phrase, the will of God, most people, including most Christians, understand it in terms of guidance. They think you are referring to what ought to be done next. But guidance is not the major problem or the major factor in understanding the will of God. The important thing is to ask God what to do, how to handle a problem. God will always answer our prayers. If we truly have no idea what to do, then ask him. He will give us the right solution. It might not be the solution we want, but it will be the right solution. And Paul goes on to say, try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. So what pleases the Lord? The one thing that the Lord wants us all to have is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Faith is believing God, believing what he says about life, believing what he says about people, about yourself, about the needs of other people. Acting on faith means to reject the success image that the world is constantly holding before us. The image of a man who is able to manipulate people, move them round at his command, and thus gain riches for himself and everything else he wants. That is the world's evaluation. But God is quite different. He says you can have all these things and still be a pathetically poverty-stricken individual. If you're going to measure life by its true values, you will understand what really counts. Is being a gracious, love-filled person in the midst of demanding circumstances, manifesting the grace of God towards others, the love of Christ, the compassion of spirit-filled life, these are the important things. It's a way of life that is defined by the grace and mercy that we extend to others as a result of our experience of God's generous grace and mercy towards us. It's a way of life that is defined by the faith by which we entrust ourselves to that mysterious and wonderful power of love that surrounds us all. It's a way of life that is defined by following Jesus' example of selfless love and the sacrificial service to others. It's a way of love, life that is truly meaningful. Call it what you will, the fear of God, the way of wisdom, following Jesus in discipleship, the life of the spirit, that's where true meaning is found in life. It's found by living the life of loving God and loving others. Solomon declares his love for his fellow man. He wants to do God's work and therefore is a good king. We too want to share our love with our fellow man. Showing the love that Jesus has shown us. We know that he will always be at our side. So surely we should be prepared to be at the side of others and offer support and help wherever we can. 
Well, I know I want to do that. Do you? With God's help, we can. Amen. Let us pray. We'll now have our prayers of intercession. Loving Lord, help us to be imitators of you as your children by forgiving one another and loving you. In receiving our daily bread, may we also seek the bread of life and may we never waver in our faith, even when it is tested by temptation to do wrong. May we follow the path of righteousness, knowing that in Jesus we have a good shepherd who will protect and teach us if we don't stray too far from him. We pray for your church in its diversity, for the many points of access it provides to the faithful, for the ministry of hospitality of which many churches provide, for the opportunity it provides for people to make a new start before God, for the stillness, absolution, peace and blessing it offers to all, and for the sacred space in which our relationship can be with you and it can blossom. May churches everywhere be in the business of nurture and challenge, transformation and change. Give us the capacity to appreciate the extent of your creation. Help us to glimpse your face as we admire your handiwork and encourage us to set our face against exploration, exploitation of the environment. We pray especially for the rainforests of the Amazon and Congo and for the people and nations who inhabit these environments. May we find alternative ways of creating wealth and sharing it. We pray for We continue in prayer from our prayer sheet. Loving Lord, may our hearts be led to worship you through thankful prayers, prayers of confession and prayers for others, safe in the knowledge that you always listen and are always a loving presence in our lives, now and always. We give thanks today for the improving COVID numbers. We give thanks for a successful operation for Don Selma and also for baby Penelope. And we bring to you the people and the communities in which we live and work and spend our leisure, praying for Eastham Country Park and the businesses local to there, our NHS in all its forms, our local shops and our schools. Be for them the heart of hope and the light of life. You, Father, are a gracious God, you care for us in our needs and rejoice with us in our joys. In our worries and troubles and sufferings, you stand with us, always ready to lead us through the valley to your light. Today, we hold in your presence those in hospital or nursing homes. And we name before you Brian Pringle and Mary Wilson. Where there is fear, be love to them. Where there is despair, be hope to them. And where there is pain, be peace to them. And we pray for the life and work of this, your church, praying today especially for Chill and Chat, our minister, our elders, the Mums and Tots group, and the elders' election process. And we hold before you the sick and those with medical needs, praying today especially for Alan Binns and Lisa's dad. And prayers are asked also for Brian and Mary from Grimsby. Bring wholeness where lives are broken and fullness of life even within its limitations. And we're remembering the bereaved. Today we remember especially Mary Wilson and all the family and Marge. In grief bring comfort, in loss bring healing, and into emptiness pour your love. And we remember others in our prayers, praying specifically for the people of Afghanistan, the people of India and the people of Haiti, Heather, all people seeking a safe haven and all those affected by rising temperatures and climate change. And we pray today especially for the people of Plymouth. Amen. Our prayers.
those who are unwell at this time from other churches. We pray particularly for Brian, Muriel, Jean, Nigel and Kathy. Bring comfort to their, and relief to their pain, to people who are temporarily or, temporarily or chronically ill. We pray for those in residential care. And we pray that common sense will prevail in preventing the spread of the COVID disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and are now at peace with you in your eternal heaven. Merciful Father, accept all these prayers in the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we'll, go, we'll have our final hymn, which is Go Forth and Tell, O Church of God, Awake. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to meet together today. As we leave this place, surround us with your love. May we see your beauty, feel your love, know your wisdom and experience your power. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. May your love be the passion in our hearts and the joy in our strength when times are hard. May your presence be the peace that overflows in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> May we go out in your name to live a life worthy of the calling you have given to each one of us. May we be willing to receive, respect and reuse the wonderful gifts that you entrust to us. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Oh,